Hi, in this video I will explain to you what the t-test is. And after this video you will know what a t-test is and when you use it, what types of t-tests there are, what the hypotheses and the assumptions are, how a t-test is calculated and how you can interpret the results. So let's start with the first question. What is a t-test? The t-test is a statistical test procedure. Hmm, and what does the t-test do? The t-test analyzes whether there is a significant difference between the means of two groups. For example, the two groups may be patients who received once drug A and once drug B. We would now like to know if there is a difference in blood pressure between these two groups. Now there are three different types of t-tests. The one sample t-test, the independent samples t-test and the paired samples t-test. When do we use a one sample t-test? We use the one sample t-test when we want to compare the mean of a sample with a known reference mean. For example, a chocolate bar manufacturer claims that its chocolate bars weigh an average of 50 grams. To check this, we take a sample of 30 bars and weigh them. The mean value of this sample is 48 grams. Now we can use a one sample t-test to check if the mean of 48 grams is significantly different from the claimed 50 grams. Okay, and when do we use the independent samples t-test? We use the t-test for independent samples when we want to compare the means of two independent groups or samples. We want to know if there is a significant difference between these means. For example, we would like to compare the effectiveness of two painkillers. We randomly divide 60 people into two groups. The first group receives drug A and the second group receives drug B. Using an independent t-test, we can now test whether there is a significant difference in pain relief between the two drugs. And when do we use the paired samples t-test? We use the paired samples t-test to compare the means of two dependent groups. For example, we want to know how effective a diet is. To do this, we weigh 30 people before the diet and then weigh exactly the same people after the diet. Now we can look at the difference in weight between before and after for each subject. We can now use a paired samples t-test to test whether there is a significant difference. In a paired sample, the measurements are available in pairs. The pairs result, for example, from repeated measurements with the same people. Independent samples are made up of people and measurements that are independent of each other. Here's an interesting note. The paired samples t-test is very similar to the one sample t-test. We can also think of the paired samples t-test as having one sample that was measured at two different time points. We then calculate the difference between the paired values giving us a value for one sample. The difference is once minus 5, plus 2, minus 1, and so on and so forth. Now we want to test whether the mean value of the difference just calculated deviates from a reference value. In this case, zero. This is exactly what the one sample t-test does. Okay, but what are the assumptions for a t-test? Of course, we first need a suitable sample. In the one sample t-test, we need a sample and a reference value. In the independent t-test, we need two independent samples. And in the case of a paired t-test, a paired sample. The variable for which we want to test whether there is a difference between the means must be metric. Examples of metric variables are age, weight and income. For example, a person's level of education is not a metric variable, this would be ordinal. 
In addition, the metric variable must be normally distributed in all three test variants, but t-tests are fairly robust to non-normal data if samples are reasonably large, around 30 per group, and if there are no extreme outliers or heavy tails. In case of an independent t-test, the variances in the two groups must still be approximately equal. You can check whether the variances are equal using Levine's test. So what are the hypotheses of the t-test? Let's start with the one-sample t-test. In the one-sample t-test, the null hypothesis is the sample mean is equal to the given reference value. So there is no difference. And the alternative hypothesis is the sample mean is not equal to the given reference value. What about the independent samples t-test? In the independent t-test, the null hypothesis is the mean values in both groups are the same. So there is no difference between the two groups. And the alternative hypothesis is the mean values in both groups are not equal. So there is a difference between the two groups. And finally, the paired samples t-test. In the paired t-test, the null hypothesis is the mean of the difference between the pairs is zero. And the alternative hypothesis is the mean of the difference between the pairs is not zero. So now we know what our hypotheses are. Before we look at how a t-test is calculated, let us look at an example of why we actually need a t-test. Let's say there is a difference in the length of study between men and women in Germany. Our population is therefore made up of all graduates who have studied in Germany. However, as we cannot survey all graduates, we draw a sample that is as representative as possible. We now use the t-test to test the null hypothesis that there is no difference in the population. If there is no difference in the population, we will certainly still see a difference in study duration in the sample. It would be very unlikely that we drew a sample where the difference would be exactly zero. In simple terms, we now want to know at what difference, measured in the sample, we can say that the duration of study of men and women is significantly different. And this is exactly what the t-test answers. But how do we calculate the t-test? To do this, we first calculate the t-value. To calculate the t-value, we need two other values. First, we need the difference between the means and then we need the standard deviation from the mean. This is also known as standard error. In the one sample t-test, we calculate the difference between the sample mean and the known reference mean. S is the standard deviation of the collected data and N is the number of cases. S divided by the square root of N is then the standard deviation from the mean, which is the standard error. In the independent samples t-test, we simply calculate the difference between the two sample means. To calculate the standard error, we need the standard deviation and the number of cases from the first and second samples. Depending on whether we can assume equal or unequal variance for our data, there are different formulas for the standard error. Read more about this in our tutorial on numico.com. In a paired samples t-test, we only need to calculate the difference between the paired values and calculate the mean from it. The standard error is then the same as for a one-sample t-test. No matter which t-test we calculate, the t-value will be greater if we have a greater difference between the means. And the t-value will be smaller if the difference between the means is smaller. Further, the t-value becomes smaller when we have a larger dispersion of the mean. So the more scattered the data, the less meaningful a given mean difference is. Now we want to use the t-test to see if we can reject the null hypothesis or not. But how can we do that? 
We already know how to calculate the t-value. Now, with the help of the t-value and the degrees of freedom, we can calculate the p-value. If you like, for both the degrees of freedom and the p-value, we have a separate video for you. But to keep a long story short, if the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05, we usually reject the null hypothesis. Okay, let's calculate the p-value for the example data. Here we have the drug type with drug A and drug B and the reduction in blood pressure. Each row is one participant who received either drug A or drug B. If you like, you can load this dataset with the link in the video description. Now let's go to numico.com. If you use the link, the data are automatically loaded. Of course, you can also copy your own data into this table. We just need to select blood pressure and drug and Numico automatically detects that a t-test is needed. Here we see the formulated hypothesis. The null hypothesis is there is no difference between drug A and drug B with respect to the dependent variable blood pressure. And below we see the results the t-value, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value. If you're not sure how to interpret the results, just click on Interpretation. A two-tailed t-test for independent samples, equal variances assumed, showed that the difference between drug A and drug B with respect to the dependent variable blood pressure reduction was statistically significant. Therefore, the null hypothesis that there is no difference in the mean value between the two groups can be rejected. So because the p-value is smaller than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. And of course, you can also check if the assumptions for a t-test are fulfilled. If not, just calculate the non-parametric counterpart of the t-test, the man with the u-test. But what exactly is the Man Whitney U test? You can learn all about this in my next video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.